In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use the Divi Leads split testing and conversion optimization system. Now, if you're not familiar with split testing, the idea is pretty simple. You create different versions of your page with different content, color, or positioning, and then you show the, those versions to different visitors and collect stats to figure out which version of the page is most effective. Now, what makes a page effective for you uh, might be different depending on the page, the purpose of the page. For example, if you have a sales page, the um, goal of the page would have people to purchase your product. If you have a landing page with an email opt-in form, for example, well, then the, the goal of that page would, would be for um, as many people as possible to land on the page and then end up subscribing to your email newsletter. And so um, in this case, I'm going to show you an example based on a fictional web design company. And the goal we're going to be trying to achieve here is to have as many people as possible um, land on our landing page and then request a free quote so that we can then um, turn those leads into clients down the road. And so here we have a um, basic landing page. We have our header here, our headline, and then we have some customer testimonials and finally a call to action module down here with a button that says contact us to get a free quote. Now considering this page, um, how do we really know that it's effective if we haven't tested it? Well, that's what split testing is for. We might, we might consider um, adding different text to the headline. How might different value propositions in the headline affect bounce rate? Um, you know, depending on how compelling this original message is, might, might affect how many people end up clicking this um, down button to read more. Um, how might different testimonials affect um, a customer's willingness to um, become a client of yours. You know, depending on the testimonials you place here, um, some might sway the, the um, visitors one way or another. Um, you know, how am I adding more or less testimonials, for example, or changing them up? All that kind of stuff can be tested. Um, and finally, um, how might different colors affect um, a visitor's propensity to click the quote button? We could try different um, size buttons here, different background colors, um, and then different text within the button. All of these things can be tested as individual split tests using Divi Leads. And so in this example, we're going to create a test on what's probably the most important part of the page, which is the um, um, headline text here, because it's the first thing people see. It's what engages the visitors. And what's, it's what's going to um, um, eventually drive them down the page, down to that sales button. And so heading back to our page here, this is the Divi Builder version of that page. We have a header, some text, three testimonials, and finally a call to action module. Now to enable split testing um, for any page, you're gonna wanna open the Divi Builder page settings here, and then just choose um, yes for enable split testing, and then click save. And once you do that, Divi is going to walk you through the process of um, setting up your split test. Now each split test has two um, elements to it, the subject that you're testing and then the goal of the page. And in this case, the subject that we're going to test is that full width header. And so I'm going to select the full width header module as my test subject. And so um, as we create different versions of the page, we're gonna be creating different versions of that um, full width header module. So I'm gonna click proceed and then just select the full width header module here with my um, uh, yellow cursor. And then next it's going to ask you to select your goal. And um, anything can be a goal, um, just like anything can be a test subject. Um, any section, row, or module can be used as both um, a te your test subject or your goal. And depending on the goal you choose, Divi Leads will track different um, and relevant user engagement stats. So in this example, our goal is to have people click on the call to action button at the bottom of the page. And so I'm going to select that call to action module as my goal by clicking on it with my um, blue circle cursor here. And then um, all that's left is to configure the two different test variations um, so that we can begin our test. And so if you go back to the test here, you can see your call to action, your goal has become blue, and then your test subject has become yellow and it's been duplicated. And these are the two different versions that are going to be shown to different visitors as they land on your page. And you can create any number of different um, uh, test subjects. So if you had five different headlines you wanted to test, 
Then you can create five different versions, and each one will be shown to different visitors independently. And then Divi Leads is going to track stats and figure out how each version of this full width header affects the click through rate of the call to action button down here. Um, ju just to make it clear what I'm trying to say here, let's say that you have a really good headline and a really bad headline. The really bad headline is shown to a visitor. They land on your page. The headline doesn't, doesn't interest them. In fact, maybe it's irrelevant to what they, they thought they were clicking on, and they just click the back button right away. They don't even explore your page. They never even have a chance to read your testimonials and um, request that quote. Now, on the other hand, our very, very good headline, which is very catchy, it, um, it, it, it solves a problem for the visitor, it gives a good value proposition, um, it's enticing, all these things that make a good headline. They see that headline, they go, wow, that's really interesting. Um, I want to read more. They, they, you know, they scroll down, they, they see your testimonials, now they're very engaged, oh wow, um, this must, must be a very great company, and finally they see that request a quote button, and now they're much more likely to click that button since, first of all, they've seen it, and second of all, they've, they've actually been engaged in your page, all because that headline was much better than the terrible headline which sent visitors um, running away. And so that's the basic concept here. And and you can test anything. You can test the content of the headline. You can test different background images, different colors, absolutely anything. Because, because how powerful the Divi Builder is, um, because it lets you, you know, customize absolutely everything, you can also test absolutely everything. But in this case, we're just going to keep it simple. We're going to have two different headers with two different um, headlines. I'm just going to change the text content, and that's it. Okay, so. I'm going to jump in here to our duplicated header. So we have two versions. This first version is the original one. It just says, welcome to our website. Um, not at all a compelling title. And so I think we can make um, some pretty big improvements to that. And so I'm going to head over to the second version, um, open that up, and then I can configure it uh, independently. And in this case, I'm just going to change the title. I'm going to say something like, do you need a beautiful website? They probably do, since they're landing on a landing page um, to, for a web designer. And I can say, we can help, exclamation point. That's much more compelling. Um, it uh, helps the visitor see that you can solve the problem, um, uses a cool term like beautiful. And we might even want to add some subject text. So maybe I can add something like some kind of, um, let's see. I might want to talk about how many customers we've had in the past. Um, so I could say, let's say I, had, I have a small web design agency. We have like 500 customers. I can say, find out why 500 customers choose our company. OK, so now we've created two different versions of the header. We can preview them both here. So we have our first version, which just says, welcome to our website, and our second version, which is, has a more compelling headline and um, a little subtext here. So now I'm going to save the page, and that's it. Our um, test is ready. In fact, it's already running. And as visitors visit this page, each visitor will be shown one of the two variations, and then Divi Leads is going to track stats to figure out which one is most effective. And because we've chosen our call to action module as our goal, Divi knows that there's a button in there, and to click um, to, to um, track uh, clicks to that button, which is going to be our most the most important metric for us on this test. And once you, you start a split testing, um, you can see that a new icon is added here. That's our stats icon. And if you open it up, it's going to do um, display stats for this current test. Now, the test needs some time to collect those stats. You need real visitors to visit your website and um, you know, either click or not click the button, depending on you know, the version they see. And so you're going to need, need to give it time. And once a couple visitors have landed on the page, when you come back here, you're going to see some stats. And so here I have a um, completed test that we can use. So here we have our, our same exact um, setup here with the, both headlines. And here I'm just going to pretend that this test has some time to run. Um, let's say it's, it's been running for one week. And when we click into the stats now, 
um, we're going to see some um, interesting um, insights. First of all, we can see the conversion rate right away here. We can see that the uh, version number one has 43% conversion rate, and version number two has 42% conversion rate. Um, so this welcome to our website version, this original version, it has 41% uh, and the new version has 43%. So the new version is, is out converting the original version, which is what we expected, but you never really know until you actually test it. So in this case, the test is validating our initial, initial assumptions, but you might find that that's not all, always the case, which is why split testing is so important. If you head over to the stats here, you're now you can see some wonderful stats. Um, these are the stats from the last 24 hours. You can see that the um, initial version, the, our initial boring header, has had 437 impressions, and um, 159 of those have resulted in a click on our call to action button, um, whereas our new version has received 184 clicks, so we've increased our conversion rate considerably. So um, that's very valuable to us. And we have some other stats too. We have um, reads, bounces, and goal engagement. And by the way, you can um, add or remove test subjects here from the graph. If you have a bunch of test subjects, sometimes you know seeing all 10 uh, subjects gets a little messy here. You can also go back in time and see the last seven days, the last month, and then all time. And so we have different stats here, and like I said, depending on the goal you choose, you're going to see different you know, potential stats here being collected and shown to you. And the most important one is always uh, shown first here, which in this case is clicks. But for example, if you had chosen the WooCommerce you know, e-commerce module, then Divi Leads would um, collect sales stats. If you chose the email opt-in module, then Divi Leads would um, collect form submission stats, conversion stats. And if you um, choose a module that doesn't have any buttons or any kind of form submissions, um, then they would just um, track uh, reading rate. So reads are a little bit different than clicks. Reads just, just tells you how many visitors actually um, visually consumed your goal. So that just shows you how many people actually read your goal. So it means that they land on your page, your headline was you know, enticing enough to, to lure them down the page, and then they actually read your goal, they reached the, they reached the bottom of the page, kind of what it, what it tells us. It re they reached your goal, they actually read it, and um, so that's what reads are. Bounces, um, this is the bounce rate of your page, and now a bounce is when someone lands on your page and then leaves right away. So they land on your page, they didn't consume anything, they bounced, and you don't want people to bounce. You want people to land on your page and then become engaged and engage with your content. And so the goal here would be to reduce the bounce rate. And um, the bounce rate is determined um, basically by a specified number of time, uh, amount of time, and if the user lands on your page and then they stay on your page for a time that is greater than, you know, that kind of bounce rate um, designation, then they have, then they're, then they're counted as a non-bounced uh, user. And you can adjust that, that timing, by the way. So by default, it's just a couple seconds. So if they land on your page and they stay there for more than a few seconds, then they're considered engaged. If they land on your page and they leave right away, then they're considered a bounce. And yeah, so in this case, um, a bounce rate would be a, a very important metric for us since we're actually, our test subject is working with the initial thing that people see, the thing that's above the fold, and that um, really, really is kind of like the most important um, part of the page as far as bounce rate is concerned. So this is, is a great stats for, stat for us uh, considering our test subject. And then finally we have goal engagement. Goal engagement is a little bit different than the other stats because it only um, takes into consideration the met, your, your goal. It doesn't actually consider the test subject at all. And what the goal engagement does is just tell you how engaging your goal actually is. So for example, if we have a wonderful headline, and people are engaged by the test subject and they scroll down the page and they reach your goal and they don't click, it could be because your goal, the goal itself is completely, completely um, you know, uninspiring. Um, so here, for example, if we chose a different button size or button color for our goal, that might um, affect goal engagement. And then when you're all done, you can um, end the test and pick the winner. So that's how you end a split test. You can either end it here or you can disable split testing here, or you can right click and choose end split test. And if you do any of those things, um, 
Divi is going to tell you that you need to select the winner, and this is the version that you'd like to keep. So if you have multiple things you're testing, um, Divi Leads has now you know, made it clear that one is more effective than the other, and so we're going to keep the one that's most effective. And so we're going to select here the one with the highest conversion rate, and once you do that, the other versions will be deleted, your split test will be completed, and you can update the page, and now the split test is done. And next up, you can start testing other things. And so a really, really effective page um, can be created by testing you know, almost everything. So we've made one test right now. We tested one variable within one module. But there's so many other things we could test here. In fact, we could test different testimonials. And we could uh, test different uh, call to actions as well. This might be an, another very important thing to, to test. And one important thing to note about Divi Leads is that goals and subjects can be the same thing. So for example, if, we want, if, if our goal is the call to action, but we also want to test our call to action, we can do that. And so I'm going to show you how to do that right now. I'm going to split test this. And I'm also going to select it as my goal. And so we've created a new split test now. And our goal and subject are exactly the same. And so you can see it's been duplicated here. So now I have two different call to action modules. Um, and I can start configuring them um, independently, just like we did for our header. And so for here, for example, I might want to test a different button color or a different button size. So if I come into our call to action module settings here, maybe I want to um, enable custom button styles and bump up the button text size. Um, maybe I want to change the background color. For example, I could do a green background color. And now we have two different call to action modules, one with a huge green button and one with a small kind of like a you know, semi-transparent button. And using these two different versions, we might come to see that, well, this big green button just results in so many more clicks than the small you know, transparent button. I and mean, that's, that's something that might really be the case. And so, but you won't, you won't know until you test it. So here's another great example of a split test we can do. And in this case, we're not testing the content. We're actually testing different uh, design uh, elements. And so I could save this and update the page. And then now our new test is running. And over time, we'll figure out just how much more effective or less effective this new version of the button is. And so that's a you know, kind of really basic overview of how split testing works. The system is quite simple. Um, you, you choose your subject. You choose your goal. You create different versions of your subject. And then you let Divi Leads figure out how those two different or multiple versions affect the conversion rate of your desired goal. Now, there's a couple more things I want to touch on here, and that is over here in the Divi Builder settings, once you enable split testing, there's a couple different things to configure here. One is the bounce rate limit. Now, I talked about bounce rate earlier. Um, a bounced user is someone who lands on your page and then leaves the page um, quickly. And we have a bounce rate limit here, and this is in seconds. So by default, it's set to five seconds. So if a user lands on your page and they leave within five seconds, they're considered a bounced user. Um, but you can adjust that. So if you want to be a little bit more strict, you know, if someone comes on your page and they don't, and they, you know, they don't stay for 15 seconds, you can consider that a bounce. Or maybe you want to be a little bit more lenient here and say, well, if someone lands on the page and leaves within three seconds, then they're considered a bounce. Next up is our stats uh, refresh interval. This is how often Divi Leads will refresh um, the stat statistics it's collecting. Um, by default, it's set to hourly, but you can change that to daily if you want to um, you know, give your server a bit of a break, as it does have to you know, um, collect, create these graphs and stuff. So if you're running on a, you know, a shared host and you know, maybe you're taxing your resources a bit, um, moving this down to daily could help, although it really shouldn't be a problem. But we added it there just in case. And a final thing, which is a, actually a really important part of um, Divi Lee's is short code tracking. And what this does is allow you to create your own um, goals off the page you're testing. So just to explain this a little bit more clearly, let's say you have 
a sales page like we had earlier. And the on page goal is to get as many people as possible to click the call to action button. But that call to action button isn't the end of the story for us. You know, that clicking the button doesn't necessarily mean that that lead turned into a client or a sale. And so what short code tracking does is allow you to, to, to track off page um, conversions as a secondary metric. Um, for example, let's say you have a, you're selling a product through some, you know, unknown third party um, pl uh, e-commerce plugin, or you're using some third party um, CRM system and you want to track not only how often people click the button to request a quote or you know, purchase your product, you want to figure out how many of those people actually turned into real customers or real clients, and um, you can do that using the short code tracking. So you can take this short code and place it on, a, on any page, and then that will become a new metric in the Divi Builder stats. So let's say you have a... Um, Let's say you're selling a, a product and at the end of the sales process, users get re referred to a you know, thank you page. You could take this short code and place it on the thank you page and then you could figure out how many people actually went all the way to the end of your sales funnel. And so that would track you know, true, true sales. But it doesn't have to be sales, it can be, it can be anything. So that's kind of like the basis for this um, short code tracking. And yep, that's a basic overview of Divi Leads. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to swing by the support forum. And there's also some additional info in the written content uh, below this video. Um, I go over how you know, the stats are calculated exactly, and, um, if those are a bit confusing. And then I go over um, short code tracking in a bit more detail. I know that that, that concept can be a little bit hard to grasp, so um, be sure to uh, scroll down and view those tutorials in more detail.